Thank you, Bob, for the beauty of the earth. What a wonderful way to begin our worship as we offer a, a prayer of praise to God for all of God's, all of God's good gifts. One of the verses of that song goes like this. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Appropriate words for this day as we remember mothers and give God thanks for their presence in our lives. I haven't, if I haven't met you, I'm Vicki Landrum, and I'm the pastor here at Centenary, and we welcome those who visit with us through social media, and especially our visitors who are here today uh, for, for Mother's Day. You know, last week we had the seniors seated on the front, and families were right behind them, so there was this real gap back in the back, but your real personality has returned. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just glad you're here. You can sit wherever you want to, but uh, it's kind of funny how it, it shifts a little bit. Uh, as we <clears throat> prepare for worship, we also want to highlight some of our other ministries that are, have started or will be coming up. And um, Mary, there you are, Mary. Why don't you come on up and stand with me, and you'll be ready when, um, when I finish a couple of things. Um, you will see, if you'll read your insert, some uh, uh, pool party coming up, uh, the needs that Micah has, our feeding ministry right across the street. Um, you'll see some meetings that are coming up, particularly our church council meeting on May the 30th. And um, Mary's going to share a few words about a, a regular spring ministry here at Centenary one that was new to me last year. And Mary, can you talk to us about it? Good morning. I'm Mary Tullis um, with the Bicota Circle here at St. Mary. And in conjunction with the, a baby bottle bobble, baby bottle boomerang that we are uh, contributing. Oh, that'll, that'll be better. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Vicki. I'm a multi-purpose preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Giving me lots of support here. <laughs> that we're participating in the, um, we are doing, the Bicota Circle is uh, sponsoring a diaper downpour to help the mothers and their little ones that Crisis Pregnancy Center uh, supports with Southwest Mississippi. We did this last year and it was greatly appreciated. And by the way, we appreciate all you do to uh, support our Bicotas projects and everything that you do for the community. And um, we ask you to contribute a pack of diapers, any size, and uh, bring them to the church anytime between now and uh, Father's Day which is June 16th. Uh, you can place them on the table that's at the uh, rear of the, uh, of the sanctuary. So let's shower these babies with a downpour of loves. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what better way to uh, celebrate and our moms and dads. And we thank you from Bicota, which stands for, if you ever wondered, be ye kind one to another. Ephesians 4.32. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. We appreciate all that Bicota does to um, lead us in ministry uh, and all they do within their group to nurture and support the women of the church. The last announcement I want to share with you, uh, well, two. Um, today we will be celebrating Holy Communion, and uh, this is Jesus' table. 
And if you can respond to the invitation a little later in the service, if you love Jesus and want to be in right relationship with others, um, then there's a place for you here. And we, you don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a United Methodist. Um, the United Methodist Church uh, practices an open table. Uh, we are all, all are welcomed because it's not ours. <laughs> It belongs to Jesus. And the second thing I want to share is that next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And it's the Sunday where we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it is a wonderful day to celebrate. It's a wonderful day to celebrate. And we'll have a covered dish lunch after worship. But I want to encourage all of you to wear something red as a symbol of the flames that came down on the disciples and the larger Christian community as they waited for the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem. And it'll just be a fun way of tying ourselves to the, to the account in Scripture. Now let me tell you how important Pentecost is. This is a quote from uh, one theologian. A church without Pentecost cannot shout, he is risen, loudly enough to sustain Easter week after week. One more time. A church without Pentecost cannot shout, he is risen, loudly enough to sustain Easter week after week. Inevitably, there comes the post-Easter slump, and without Pentecost, we cannot sustain the shouting of he is risen. So come on next Sunday as we um, celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray now. God, you've called us to worship with the beautiful music uh, that Bob has provided. We know you're present here right now. Um, we have heard of opportunities to, be, uh, to go deeper in ministry, in our community, and to go deeper in worship. So now, Lord, um, open our hearts in this hour that we might, uh, we might remove all barriers to you and that we might be open um, to how you need to shape us in this hour. Uh, we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join me in hymn number 369, hymn 369.
seated. As a way of observing Mother's Day, I would like for us to um, enter into a time of prayer for our mothers. And uh, I would like for us, in the first part of this prayer, um, to have our eyes wide opened, if you would like. And as we go before the Lord in prayer, I'd like for us, if you wish, to name the name of your mother whether your mom is sitting next to you here or like mine is over in Vicksburg waiting for me to come and be her spend the night company tonight or whether our moms are in heaven. And that as we say their names aloud, that that is part of our prayer, um, a prayer for them, a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer for healing, whatever that might be. So God, we come before you today on this Mother's Day, and we give you thanks for our mothers, for Mita Watkins, let us continue praying for our mothers who have given us life and love that we may show them reverence and love. We pray for mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. For women, though without children of their own, who like mothers have nurtured and cared for us. We pray for mothers who have been unable to, to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not been able to sustain their, their families. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her church, so you, to her children, so you watch over your church. So bless these women we have named aloud. Bless those we name in our heart that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. And let the examples of their faith and love shine forth. And grant that we, their sons and daughters, may also continue to pray for them with thanksgiving in our heart. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Will the children join me down front for children's moments? <laughs> he got it. Oh, right. He made it by himself. Good morning, June. How are you? Good morning, sweetheart. How are you? Well, good morning, everybody. Are we good? Are we good? I know the first thing y'all did when you got up this morning, I bet you got up and said, Happy Mother's Day, huh? All right. Because today is Mother's Day, and we want to, to remember and celebrate our moms today. And I know we're probably going to do something real, real special for mom, too. Right? Okay. Um, as we uh, continue, though, in our, our morning worship service, um, our scripture today is taken from the Gospel of John. And Jesus has gathered together with his disciples for one last meal. And he um, talks to them for a long time. And then he offers a prayer for them. But guess what, boys and girls? Jesus not only offered a prayer for those people that were sitting right beside him, for those who had been a part of his life for the past three years, he offered a prayer up for me and for you and for everybody um, in this church and everybody who would come to know Jesus. Did you know that? He prayed for all of us, too. I want to share 
this scripture with you. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through the disciples' message. So that means he was praying for us on the very night before he died. And you know um, what a beautiful picture of that is for us today? I want you to turn around and look at the communion table behind you. Jesus was together with his friends and he shared a meal with his disciples. And after that meal, he did something very special when he took the bread and he took the cup and he prayed and he gave thanks and he talked about offering his body and his blood on our behalf. And so today, when we uh, celebrate or receive communion, we remember just how much Jesus loved us. He loved us so much that he prayed for us the night before he died, and that when he died, he gave his life for us also. And as scripture says, for whoever would believe in him. So we remember that prayer this day, but also we remember we have a beautiful picture of how of Jesus' love for us when we look at the communion table today and remember that is a picture of Jesus' love for us because it's going to come for us the broken body and the poured out blood of Jesus Christ that he that he gave on our behalf, okay? So when we come to communion, let's think about Jesus' prayer for us and let's think about Jesus' love for us. Let us pray, let us pray, okay? Oh God, thank you that you loved us so much that you prayed for us on the very night before you died. That is love. And as we look at the communion table today, we have a picture of that love. And we are going to come back to the table and receive the broken body and the poured out blood. And remember, remember that you died and you gave your life for us and for whosoever would believe in you. That, again, is love. Thank you, God, for loving us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die on our behalf. And it is in his holy and blessed name that we do pray. Amen. And as we come to our time of concerns and prayers, uh, as always, I would ask you to take a moment to take note of the many, many names that are listed in our bulletin this week. But we would also add um, Mary Garland. Mary is the sister of Nancy Henserling. Nancy's out here somewhere. There she is. I'm looking in the choir for you. <laughs> anyway, she had knee replacement this week, and so we want to be in prayer for May and for her recovery. We also want to extend sympathy to the family of Shelton Whittington. I know many of you know Shelton, and many lives have been impacted through him as he, was, as he served for many years as band director at Southwest. And Bob was sharing this morning just the impact that Shelton had on his life. So we give thanks for that impact, Bob, but, we, but also on the many others that uh, Mr. Shelton touched through his music and ministry at Southwest. 
and also want to extend Christian sympathy to the family of Susie Sanders. Susie is um, Lamar's aunt, and she died this morning, so we want to remember that family also. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, again, how good it is to come into this place, Lord to meet each other and know that we are going to worship together, that we are going to celebrate your love this day and every day. Father God, thank you for the many expressions of love that, that come our way, but for the most important that you sent your son, your son, to die on our behalf. And today we are going to remember and come to the table, Lord, and give thanks, give thanks for that great love. Father, we also thank you for the privilege of praying one for another. And so we lift these names up before you that are listed in our bulletin. And we give thanks for all you have done on their behalf and all you will do on their behalf. And we especially remember May this morning and the Shelton Whitting family, Lord, and the Susie Harrigal family. We pray that as you gather around and offer healing and comfort and strength, Lord, that everyone feels your presence and leans into that presence and feels your love and your grace as always. So thank you again, Lord, for this time and this place where we, the people called Centenary, gather together in your name to love you and worship you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our being. And as the ushers prepare to come forward, we remember that as forgiven and reconciled people, we do offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
did great. ask you to remain standing and I want to thank our quartet. You're the first time I've heard you sing and that was just beautiful. As we come to worship, we not only offer our presence, but we offer our prayers and our monetary gifts and our service and our witness. I'm on call and audible right now. I believe Peyton Manning would have said, Omaha. Put, put. So here it goes. We're going to sing our hymn, uh, 526, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, while we're standing. And we're going to focus just on the gospel reading today. So let's turn to 526. <laughs> remain standing for the reading of the gospel lesson today. And God, as we come before you to read your word, we do pray that you would open our hearts and minds to the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Here in the 17th chapter of John, I began um, reading at verse um, 6. Excuse me, at verse 9.
Jesus is praying for his disciples and for us. I pray for them. I'm not praying the world for the world, but for those you have given me, because they are yours. All my things are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. While I was with them, I was protecting them by your name that you had given me. And I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except for the son of destruction, that the scripture may be fulfilled. Now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy completed in them. I have given, given them your word, the world hated them because they are not of the world as I am not of the world. I'm not praying that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. So sanctify them by truth. Your word is truth. Just as you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world and I sanctify myself for them so that they also may be sanctified by the truth. And listen to these two verses especially. I pray not only for these, but also for those who believe in me through their message. May they all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be one in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. Sometimes in situations we experience, we um, have so much emotion behind uh, what we want to say that we can get uh, kind of choked up, or maybe a tear will run down our cheek. Yesterday I was watching one of the news programs at around 5.30, and at the end of that program they were having um, some good news. And there was a woman who had been working on um, getting her associate's degree in education for many years, and she'd had to stop and start her classwork as, she, um, as her family grew. She and her husband had two, have two sons. And the father and the older son, who was six, were seated behind the section where all the graduates were filling in, filing in. And the little boy saw his mom, and he's waving, and then he starts crying. And his father said, Bud, what, what's wrong? And the little boy says, I love my mama, and these are happy tears. At six years old, he understood that this was an important occasion in the life of his mama that she had worked very hard for. And then the father said, uh, so they're happy tears? And he said, yes. But someone had taught him at home that crying was okay and that sometimes in order to express our emotion, words fail us and we, have to, we resort to happy tears. In this section of scripture, as Connie has already mentioned to the children, um, Jesus is, um, has a lot of emotion. This, this, these verses I just read come, according to John, after the Last Supper, and uh, several of these chapters are uh, presented here as kind of a long sermon. And in this time, 
he is trying to pour everything into them that would be a source of comfort. In chapter 14, we hear the familiar words, in my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? I'm going to come for you. I will not leave you orphaned. He is saying in these chapters, um, just pouring his heart out, just pouring his heart out to the disciples. And in this, the chapter from which we read today, chapter 17, he, ta- he moves from sermon talk to prayer talk. And in the prayer that begins at the first of chapter 17, he is praying to God, and then he switches, and as he continues praying to God, to pray for his disciples who were right with him. And then he gets to the point in the prayer where he's even more inclusive and includes us. What does it mean for Jesus to pray for you and me? Jesus is praying for you and me. That is the most astounding thing in the world. That Jesus has here in the 17th chapter of John an explicit prayer, an explicit prayer that in which he not only prays for his disciples who are with him, but he prays for everyone that will be touched by their message of Jesus Christ. And that's you and me. I hope that makes your heart just kind of do a little flippy flop. Maybe it brings happy tears to your face like it did the little six-year-old boy when he was overcome by seeing his mom walk in for graduation. Jesus prays for us. Jesus knew that the message of his love would spread. He knew that there would be people like us who would need encouragement. He knew his disciples right there with him were going to have sad days ahead. And he knew that praying for them was one of the most important things he could do. Jesus prays for you and me. One of the primary things that he is praying for in this chapter 17 is that his disciples of that day and his disciples of our day would be one in him. That we would be one in him. That even in the midst of disagreements, even in the midst of different points of view, whether that is something that seems trivial, like the color of the carpet, which has been known to split churches, or whether it is something much more theologically important, that we would remain as one, just as Jesus is one with the Father. That's not always easy to do. It's not easy always to remain as one in Christ in our families, is it? Families can be surely be messy, but they also can be wonderful. It's not always easy to remain as one in the church, in our church family. In one Sunday school class I was in when I was in a, a young adult living in Nashville where we were getting involved in trying to help a homeless person. And the homeless person, instead of just taking the donation and going on his way, decided he wanted to be one, a member of our class. 
And we were fine giving money, but when he decided he was going to come and sit there among us, stinky from living in the, the recyclable uh, container in the back of the church, we weren't so sure about this being one stuff. Sean forced us to figure out whether we really meant what we said when we professed Christ as our Savior. Do we mean it? Do we accept this great gift he gives us where he even prays for us? Do we live as one? Do we model his behavior by praying with our families so that we might tap into this um, devotional practice that sustained Jesus himself? If we don't, maybe today is the day to start. On this last Sunday of Easter, maybe this is the day where we sit in awe that Jesus Christ knows each of us and he is praying for us as he did long ago. Maybe this is the day that we have a prayer around the table for a meal with our family. Maybe this is the day where we speak to our loved one about where we've seen God. Maybe it's from the bluebird outside. Maybe it is the sound of the owl um, hooting. Maybe it's the colors that are beginning to come out across our yards. Maybe it's the water that was received here in the rain. Maybe it's the story about the six-year-old who was crying happy tears because he was so proud of his mama. God is praying for you and for me right here and right now. He's praying for our protection. He knows we're in the world where we're faced with all kinds of temptation. Every one of us. And he's asking for God to protect us, to help us make good choices each day. That we might live as one with Christ that we might live as one with each other. In Romans 8, there are a couple of verses that have been an anchor to me in the past year and a half. And there's talk there of the Holy Spirit. And that when we cannot pray for ourselves, Paul writes, that the Holy Spirit will intercede for us with sighs too deep for words. When we cannot pray for ourselves, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. On this Mother's Day, I proclaim this good news. Jesus Christ, our Savior, prays for us. God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, prays for us. That we might be safe in this world. That we might have a relationship with Jesus and that we might be one 
with each other as the Father and the Son are one. Let us pray. Lord, it's just pretty incredible, oh, really incredible. That you would have prayed for us so long ago. So we stand amazed here in your presence. And we stand amazed in the presence here of your meal provided for us, prepared for us as we stand amazed of your sacrifice out of your love for us. So as you continue to pray for us, we receive this invitation found in your bulletin to come to your table. We know that you invite us to your table, all who love you and who earnestly repent of our sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So hear our confession, Lord, in the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts so that we are able to admit to you the fullness of our lives, that which is beautiful and good and that which is hurtful and hateful. We confess that we do not follow Jesus in all that we do. We love with condition, we judge and condemn, we cast the first stone and keep the logs in our own eyes. We do not turn to you as the source of our healing. Forgive us, we pray, Forgive our sin and empower us to be imitators of Christ in love and service. Amen. Not only does Jesus pray for us, he forgives us. So hear these words of assurance of forgiveness. Friends in Christ, know that the mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. And I remind you of the surpa this surpassing grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia and amen. Please join me on page 13 of your hymnal as we continue offering prayers of praise and thanksgiving to Jesus over this holy meal. For those who might be unaware of this, um, we use grape juice here in, um, in most Methodist churches instead of wine as a way of uh, making sure that we are more open uh, to people for whom the wine might be a problem. And if you need gluten-free wafers, they will be available at this station. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on heaven and all the company, so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, 
and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and gave thanks to you and broke the bread. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we come to offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us be bold to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll invite our musicians and servers to come and choir if you want to come on down. As you wait your turn, and there will be a station here and a station here, where you will come forward and we will give you um, a wafer representing, that is the body of Christ. And then you'll have the opportunity to uh, dip this just by the edge in the um, blood of Christ that will be found in the chalice. Um, as you wait, I invite you to use that as a time of thinking about all the things you have to be thankful for 
for the Jesus who prays for you. How many things, what are those things that you are thankful for? And maybe where is Jesus calling you in this next week to live a life being one with Christ? broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. 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 This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. 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 This is the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand now if you're able and join me in our final hymn. <clears throat> Number 521. 